Hey guys, it's been a long time since we've had a build session. Uh, we're getting ready to do injectors. I finally got a whole bunch of the uh, remodeling done that my wife wanted. Uh, these are the upper bolts. We'll, tight, we'll put those in, tighten them to 10 foot-pounds. That's the one that the uh, injector slide goes in. These are the lower bolts, and of course these are the oil squirters. And I don't remember this being a seven cylinder, so I had to order another oil uh, diverter. I seem to have misplaced one, so that's on order. And we'll just put that in when it gets in. But uh, it's really good to get back to work on this thing. It's been so long. <coughs> I've done a ton of woodworking in the uh, garage here. Had this thing, had this engine covered with. Uh, garbage bag and then a plastic drop cloth and then over that was a uh, moving blanket just to make sure it didn't get any dust in it and it looks like the day I covered it up so uh, let me get set up and we'll begin uh, we need to talk about injectors for this build we got I bought my injectors from full force diesel great guys to deal with and to speak with they're very they're technically very good they know what they're doing um, and they recommended this build for me for the horsepower that I wanted these are they are 230 no 205 30s uh, they're a hybrid and uh, that together with our turbo that we're going to install should get us around 425 uh, horsepower and right at 950 pounds-feet of torque. So that's uh, that's actually really good. Uh, that'll put us in the, the modern diesel output. And uh, should be a pretty good build. Of course, you have to buy a programmer uh, for these to work. And we're running a PHP Hydra. And uh, that's not even installed yet. None of this stuff is installed, so you get to see all the goodies. And then we got some more stuff. We got a, a few other things we're going to put on here to help balance the, uh, balance the build, basically. Because you can't just drop injectors in and expect them to work and do their magic without all the supporting um, mods that you need to actually support that kind of power. To make it reliable, anyway. So, uh, we'll work our way through it. Uh, we got a lot to do next couple days we'll we'll get this thing in and uh, we'll get the turbo in I've got to do some uh, coating for the exhaust manifolds they're all sandblasted I've got to spray them with Cerakote throw them in the oven for and get those uh, ceramic coated now we'll see how it turns out it's, it's gonna be pretty interesting but on with the build uh, if you'll remember way back when we put the cylinder heads together we chose um, brass injector cups. Well, there's a lot of, not issues, but possible issues that you can encounter with brass um, injector cups. One thing is cracking. <clears throat> there have been a substantial number of failures using brass. And I always wondered why big diesels use stainless and Ford chose to use brass and uh, I found these on riffraff stainless injectors injector cups so he's the only one I know that's selling them so we're gonna open this box and see what they look like and we're more than likely going to swap them out brand new brass ones for brand new stainless steel of course, the brass won't be usable once the uh, extractor gets a hold of them, but, eh, you know, the brass would probably be fine, but this engine's being built for longevity. Longevity is going to be stainless steel, not brass. So let me set up and we'll take a look at these things real quick. So I cut that uh, cellophane off. Let's open them up. Oh, yeah. Well, that is substantially different 
than a brass. I have an old brass one here that we pulled. Hang on a second. Let me pull it and see what they look like. Okay, guys. There's an original brass one. There's a stainless one. Look at the strengthening they've put in from here to here. This thing is the same thickness all the way around. This one is not. Man, it's a lot. A lot more beefier. Now the inside is milled for the O-ring. Just like this one. But the outside is where the strength is coming in. That's a pretty amazing difference. Yep. I think we're going to pull those brand new ones out and put these brand new ones in. So, I've already pulled a couple glow plugs. I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest of them. Because uh, we were actually putting injectors in. Uh, test fitting injectors and I actually have two injectors and we're going to pull those too but um, yeah so this is kind of a two steps forward one step back but the quality of these cups I mean that's uh, if you see them in person it's really impressive there's some substantial weight to them and you know it, it, it makes sense because you've got a cast iron head the original was a brass cup and a stainless steel injector. You know, separated by O-rings, but still stainless steel. It just, you know, the brass doesn't really, to me, doesn't really fit into the equation. I've worked on some big diesel engines, and they don't use brass for much of anything. Uh, it's either stainless steel or bearing, bearing material. But uh, injector cups, I've always seen as stainless steel. The 7.3 is actually the first engine I've seen with the uh, brass. I don't know if the 6.0 has brass or not. I've never worked on one. But since we're going for longevity and endurance on this engine, we're going to go with the parts that are going to make a difference. Like everything else in it that we put in that's going to make a difference. So, let me set up and we'll get started. Okay, so let's get this injector out. Huh? Get the exhaust port off here. You know, this angle is not very good. Let me set the camera at a different angle. All you're seeing is my hands. Okay, now you can see better. We're going to have to pull all of the uh, glow plugs before we start because we're going to rotate each cylinder to top dead center as we work on it. Let me show you an easy way to pop these out. Okay, easy way to take these out. When you get the screws out, slide this up. You can do this in a truck, when the, with the vehicle in the truck too. It's real simple. Find a place to slip a 5 8 wrench under it. Out it comes. That's it. Pretty simple. Now, of course, we'll have to put a new crush washer on it because it's fresh now. But we'll put these in the uh, bags that they came in to keep them absolutely clean. Glow plugs. I already pulled this one. We'll pull the other three. Now glow plugs are only torqued to 10 foot-pounds. So they should 
Where do you see that coming? I know it seems like we're undoing a lot of work, but I think it's uh, going to benefit us. Easy trick for glow plugs. Piece of eighth inch vacuum line. Now, if this engine had been running for a long time and everything, with the never seize that we put on them, I bet you could still pull them out this way. That never sees is a miracle worker as far as getting things back apart. One. I've been waiting to get on this engine for so long. Finally got to it and was getting ready to put injectors in started researching fresh injector failure rates and come to find out there's quite a few this one's off camera but it's no big deal it's just a little, there's quite a few um recorded failures of new injectors in old cups and the cups crack just from i guess just from the sheer, sheer stress of removal and install of a new injector so it's interesting, but all right. Now we're going to start with this injector cup. Now the engine's together, so this is just like pulling one that's in a. Uh, we're going to take this both out. Uh, just like pulling one that's in a vehicle. So. Other bolts out. All right. So what we want to do is bring this cylinder to top dead center on the power stroke. That means. Right now it's on the exhaust stroke, I think. That's an exhaust valve. <coughs> yeah. Um, so, we're going to have to go once around. Ah, I don't have the other glow plugs out of the other bank. Let me pull those real quick and we'll continue. Okay, I feel like an idiot. You all are probably going, you didn't have to pull glow plugs, dude. There's no injectors in it. There's no compression. Okay, I stand correct. So, anyways, I didn't pull those. I only pulled the one within that was already loose. <coughs> so, let's bring this girl around to top dead center. Let me set up for that. Just to let you see how easy this engine is to turn over. I haven't turned it over since I put it into storage halfway through the build. So, this will be a good indication of how well that Luber plate assembly uh, stuff works. So let's see if we can roll it over. Oh yeah. Not a big deal. Let's see over here. That's the bottom, okay? There she is. Let me get a flashlight and I'll show you exactly how close the injectors are to the top of the piston. Okay, we're going to look down this bore, this injector bore. You can see the top of that aluminum piston flashing. That's how close they are. So when this injector is sticking there, it's right real close to the piston. So it's interesting. All right, let's pull this one. Okay, so I got this first one done. Uh, wanted to make sure everything would work. Uh, extraction, anyways. Let me uh, show you how we did this one. We'll follow this one all the way through. You've already seen how to get them out. 
basically it's uh, thread them down in and oh, yeah. and this is the riffraff uh, cup extractor it's, it's off the good works really well See if that'll get it. Tell you what, that Loctite gets a grip. It doesn't want to let go, that's for sure. Do its job, that's for sure. And I did find out that if you um, find uncured Loctite in the bore when you pull these, it's because it's an anaerobic glue. It doesn't, dry. It doesn't dry in the presence of oxygen. Only lack of oxygen. And you can tell that because you have to use a uh, wire brush to get it out. So it's doing a good job sealing. pretty well you know I don't know how this tool would work on these stainless cups if you ever had to pull them I imagine it would be a bear because brass is pretty soft and, you know this just threads this just threads down into the cup and then you extract against this bar but uh, yeah I don't know how you get the stainless steel ones out that would be kind of tough all right so Let's take a look and compare the clean and the dirty. That's why I did one ahead of time. So let's, uh, let's move the camera. That one is the first one that we did. And I've already cleaned it with the wire brushes. This one. This one you can see the compound on the sides down here and in the bore on the I don't know if you can see it on the camera you may not be able to there's a light green tinge all the way around that it's good seal but uh, we have to get all that cleaned out so let me put the camera back where it was and we'll set up and clean that bowl. I'll show you the result when we're done I just bought some cheap brushes on a drill and an extension. I'm going to go down and clean that seat. Then I bought a little bit bigger one to clean the upper part where the glue's at. So, ooh, we need to bring that around to top dead center. Before we start making a mess of it. Yeah, and he's got, he's on an exhaust stroke, so we're not too far from him. There she is. Pistons at top dead center. So let's uh, commence to clean in here. She probably wear safety glasses. It doesn't take much. It's just a matter of getting it in there and what you really the bottom just polishes up. What you really need to get are the sides because that's what the ceiling surface is for the cut. Alright. You can see. Let me get this in the right light here. Now you can see how nice and clean that is. The bottom of that cup bore is nice and clean. Let's get the mirror and check the sidewalk. Because, <laughs> like I said, the ceiling surface for these is this wall 
and this wall. So we want to get this part of the wall clean, the side. And you can see some of that stuff is still a little soft because it's out in the open. Um, the stuff that's against here is it's pretty tough. Yeah, it's, it's dry. It's set up good. Um, so, let's check it. My only problem is I only have one drill extension, so I have to change the brush. So I try to do each piece completely and then... I wish I could show you guys this, but I don't think I can get the camera anywhere near a right angle to get this. Basically what you do is you're checking, shove the mirror straight down and look at the sidewall. And that one is clean. Alright, so let me change brushes real quick. And I'll show you how I do the other four. And you can get these brushes anywhere. I got these off the I, I couldn't find them local. I have my Ace Hardware. <coughs> Excuse me, Ace Hardware. So I uh, picked a set off of uh, Amazon. They're like six fifty for a set. This one doesn't fit all the way down. <coughs> it's really tight, so it gets them clean really quick. So let's get this one. dust. Let me see if I can explain. Yeah, you can see the dust on the side. And now you can see that bottom really good. In fact, under magnification, I can see, maybe that's dust. A little vacuum it out and see. But this sidewall, let me get a swing in here. This, um, this sidewall here, right here, is where that glue goes. And you just have to brush it off. Now, all that glue's in there, so you can blow it out. I prefer to vacuum it out. It pulls it all out. So, let's vacuum it out real quick. And you'll need a, instead of a regular shop vacuum, you need an inch and a quarter adapter or an inch and a quarter shop back. I seem to have both, so get this nosy thing out of here. Alright. So I still have dust on the top, so let's get this out. Put it down there. Yeah, that's better. At least we got it out of there now. You don't want to gouge it up because then you'll have a leaker for sure. The wire brush is not stout enough to gouge it, but it will polish it. Yeah, see this. There we go. This top lip. Is completely clean but there's a little piece oh it just didn't get sucked out okay I thought so let me jam that vacuum down in there again A, uh, before we put the new cups in, we will take um, a damp paper towel 
with acetone and wipe all that off so there's no possibility of uh, grease on there so or oil because that will keep it from sealing I can see I still see, I still see a glue line let's get that glue line I'm sorry I said the glue line was up here glue line is right there we didn't even touch it so let's get that brush in there get that get that clean of course it really has to stay together all right let's get <laughs> Clean now. There's our little ridge line. I hope you can see that. I don't know. Um, and that ridge line is clear of any kind of debris. All right, let me check this. Okay. All right, let's vacuum it out again. Wipe it out. So we'll take the towel. And I think we'll call this one complete. Yep. Alright. Looks pretty good. You can see the top top of the piston. Very good. Repeat six more times. <laughs> I'm just gonna set the camera off to the side and go ahead and finish this bank. Uh, we'll record it. I don't know if we'll actually see it, but <laughs> it might be a uh, little <coughs> dust. Um, might actually be just a a uh, high speed. So let's put everything back over here. Zoom back out here. Yeah. There we go. That's a pretty good angle, right there. Plus, I can work. All right, let's do it. I have to get this one off. The easiest way is with a big pair of channel locks so you can get some leverage and a wrench. Just unscrew it. So let me do that and uh, I'm going to pause this while I do that because it's not a big deal. A little trick here for the brush. I didn't realize I had stuck the camera. <clears throat> if you wrap it, it keeps some bristles from spreading out. You may have to wrap it several times because the tape wears out, but 